Poetry Pals, welcome back to another video. I am here with Poetry Machine, otherwise known as Beth Calverley, and we are in Ashton Court and we want to talk to you about self-care. Uh, last year, just before Christmas, Beth did a whole series about self-care on her Instagram and I think she's one of the best people to talk to about it. Uh, so yeah, Beth, what do you like to do for self-care? Um, cool, yeah, so one of the things, so my happiness resolution this year um, was actually to spend more time in the garden um, and one of the things I do to make sure I don't get too stressed and be like giving myself a hard time um, is to focus on small things that I can know that I can actually achieve and not huge things that I will just go oh see you haven't done that so you're rubbish yeah so that's kind of a self-care tip so my happiness resolution is to spend half an hour in the garden every weekend which has been achievable and I've done it every weekend so far mm -hmm. and what I actually find is that because it's a small thing I actually I actually carry on and do more gardening than I would have done yeah. and then I'm getting my hands in the soil uh, I'm feeling close to nature breathing in the fresh air um, and not getting too in my own head so I'd say that's one thing so mm -hmm. uh, is gardening but also associated with that like small little bite-sized things you can actually do yeah I think sometimes self-care can turn into like treat yourself and sometimes you end up just spending money on yourself mm. and I think that sometimes that sort of self-care can almost sort of spiral into something that isn't quite right do you yeah. ever fall into that or is it just me um well I don't really have enough money to do that so <laughs> all of my self-care things are kind of like ah oh, the freedom of nature um well today we're going on a little walk aren't we in Ashton Court so yeah yeah, um, yeah going on walks um you were saying about reading that's something that you can do that can yeah. be quite you know um, low cost especially if you've got a lot of books like me where I haven't actually read them and I've just stored them for ages yeah one of my resolutions not necessarily just a 2019 resolution because I think it's going to take me a bit longer is to actually read all the books that I own because I've got way too many that are just all piled up so I've got all these different stickers coding whether I've read them or not and I'm making my <laughs> way through but at the moment I uh, I actually just bought a brand new book from World of Books, you know they do um, secondhand books, and so I got a copy of the Silmarillion for two pound eighty, oh, and I've wow. been reading that. Uh, mm. But I can only read a couple of pages at a time because it's so <laughs> it's so dense. Yeah, but that that can be good though, right? Like, so what other things do you do to like take care of yourself? Uh, I know you mentioned sleep to me before. What techniques do you use to get enough sleep? Um, I think one of the worst things that I can do to try and get enough sleep is like be working on my laptop in bed right up until the minute of going to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think just trying to set, okay, well, like plan out your day a bit um, and then say, I'm going to stop at this point. And no matter what you've achieved, exactly, yeah. you've got to stop. And yeah. then focus on what you have achieved yeah. and then move on. Mm -hmm. Like I'm so often guilty of not doing that, but mm -hmm. when I do do it, um, it's really useful. And like I actually count the number of days per week that I have eight hours sleep mm. to try and motivate myself to do it. Nice. Um, and that's actually been really helpful because I just find that like if I wake up and I've had, you know, around eight hours sleep, I just feel so much more sort of alive and okay in myself yeah and able to like more resilient whereas if I'm tired I just feel that little things set me off way more oh, yeah, totally. and my anxiety is way worse and yeah stuff, so. I don't allow my laptop in my bed at all that's like a big no-go and I have to limit like I don't like to look at my phone about an hour before bed mm. I have to stop that. That's a really good idea. Which is weird because I use my phone for my meditation app, which I also use to sleep. So I found this new one. You've heard of Headspace, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was using Headspace and I used up the free trial and then it was like five pounds a month. And Tom Denby recommended Buddhafy, which was like four pounds all in mm -hmm. and it's just got loads and loads of meditation including a load of them that are specialized for when you're in bed about to fall asleep wow. and it like helps you like guide your brain into sleep That's and it cool. works i've never tried anything like it before and i go right off trey is asleep within 10 seconds of me putting it on really? i have to last the whole five minutes and then i do like 
fall asleep. But what yeah, Buddha Fi. Buddha Fi. Okay, I'm definitely, definitely <laughs> out. That's cool. That's okay. a really good one. And obviously doing my like journal thing that you mm -hmm. put me onto, that really helps as well. Like doing that gratefulness thing the right gratitude, before bed yeah. thing. I think practicing gratitude every day. Like So that's writing down three things you're grateful for. I mean, do you find that on some days it's like really hard to think of things? Yeah, definitely. But that there are always things, even if they're really small, and yeah. you're being a bit passive aggressive, like, oh, well, I suppose I've got, I don't know, I've just made a cup of coffee. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, oh. coffee features quite yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. in my gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it can give you a, like a, even. Even if, it's even if you're struggling to think of them, it yeah. can actually give you a little lift, I found. Yeah. And so, like, exercise as self-care, mm -hmm. what do you do? Because you, uh, you do climbing, don't climbing. you? Climbing, yeah. Well, that's actually really good for resilience because, well, I mean, I used to have, like, a, well, I do actually have quite a bad fear of heights. So, climb, right. yeah. well, we do bouldering, so it's not that high, but um, the one we go to is, like, the legal height for for bouldering before you have to use ropes mm. um, but it's really good because each week you will see yourself improve because the same there's the same problems for a few weeks in a row yeah so you might not be able to do something and then the next week even if you just get one more handhold one handhold further than last time you still think we still feel like oh I still couldn't do it but you also think yeah. but at least I did get that one handhold further and yeah. that is kind of how life is really isn't it so yeah. it's quite a good metaphor for um, overcoming daily annoyances yeah. uh, through your own just go and also trusting yourself as well because there will be loads of times where you have to just go okay my leg is like balanced on this tiny little foothold yeah. and I have to let go and like sort of reach up oh. for another one oh. but you just have to trust yourself to yeah. do it and that actually is really good for, like really good for me okay what about you I run Mm -hmm. which 15 year old me would never have believed yeah I hate running <laughs> I hate running too <laughs> um, but so I'm training for a 10k and I started running by doing the couch to 5k and what I loved about that is I use this app called Runkeeper mm -hmm. that like tracks my pace and my distance and all of these things and it's such a great feeling when you get to the end of the run to find out that you've done it the fastest that you've ever done it mm. or even if you haven't just the fact that you've gone out and mm. done it that week and so I always aim to run three times a week wow. and I just get such a t sense of achievement when yeah. I do it and also I just sleep so well yeah I'm just shattered all the time yeah that's really good <laughs> wow that's really impressive yeah so um I'm I've actually booked myself on for a 10k in a few weeks and um, I've also agreed to run the Bristol Half Marathon with Siley, which isn't until September. Oh my gosh. But now I've got to work up from 10k to a half marathon. Oh my gosh. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> no, I, honestly, if I see the bus leaving, and I could probably get it if I ran, I would just be like, oh, I'll, I'll get the next one. <laughs> you have kind of convinced me. Yeah, give it a go. Maybe I will. Although, I used to run. I used to run. I just got bad knees. That's all. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not for everyone. It's especially like it's quite a high impact thing. So mm. if you do struggle with like knees or hips or anything like that, it can be really shit. So the other thing that I like to do is cycle. I just mm. cycle everywhere because you've got a bike, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love my little. Have bike. you found that yeah. you've been cycling less since you've got the car? Um, <laughs> no, not really, because we don't do journeys that we could do by bike. Yeah. So we only do the journeys we wouldn't otherwise have done now. Yeah. But like with the running thing, I mean, I work, you know, that project I did with This Mum Runs? Yeah, yeah. Um, through speaking to all those women and like hearing the challenges they overcame through running mm. is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So I have kind of been quite tempted to, maybe you'll get me. Yeah, do it. I'll put the running. link to Beth's This Mum Run things <laughs> in the description. <laughs> Cool. Thanks for talking to me, Beth. I think we're going to lose the light now. Is there anything else that you have to say? Maybe one more nugget of wisdom about self-care? Yeah, self -care. I, think, I think we were just, I mean, we were talking about how a lot of what we've said is about general maintenance stuff. So mm -hmm. like just month on month, week on week, um, how to just keep yourself buoyant. Yeah. But we were talking about how if if you get to that place where you know going out and doing gardening really is just not mm. going to be feasible mm -hmm. what what can you do when you you know when you really can't feel gratitude for things and yeah that kind of thing yeah i think there's a um 
a sort of thing of like getting back to the basics like you said I actually have now it's I'm not even trying to compare the two things but I have a hangover checklist mm -hmm. so when I'm really hungover because I've overindulged I have a list of things I do that I know that if I do them I will feel better mm. and it's shower mm. brush my teeth eat have a cup of tea and if I do all of those things my hangover will be less than what it is now I think that's probably those are the things that I would do even if I wasn't hungover but yeah. just having a bad day actually yeah so. yeah I think as well like sometimes you can feel really low and feel like it's a really bad mental health day but sometimes that can be like part of it can be because you haven't been looking after your body mm. so actually like drinking water making yourself a cup of tea and eating some food mm. just checking that you haven't forgot the basics of living yeah. and doing all of those and then sort of checking in again to see how you feel can be a really good way around yeah. that and sometimes just having a day where you just don't do anything you just get pizza yeah and just sit in bed and watch Gilmore Girls yeah and like taking the guilt away from that as well because especially when you're you know freelancing or you've got your side hustle and stuff like that it can be really hard to give yourself that time off and I think mm. you've got to like take that guilt away yeah. sometimes of having a day to yourself just be proud of what you have achieved yeah oh thanks Beth thanks for coming <laughs>